In this video, we're going to learn how to instantiate prefabs in Unity Dots. We're going to build our prefabs using normal game objects as usual, and then we're going to convert them into super fast entities that we can spawn during runtime. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here I will cover several ways we can convert game object prefabs into entity prefabs and several ways to store them for later use. Dots is still very much in development, so the best practices aren't yet known, so that's why I'm going to show as many different ways as possible. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Okay, so here let's start off with the most straightforward way possible. So here in my scene, let's first build our prefab. So let's create a new 3D object and let's make it a quad. Here in my project, I have this simple material and just use it. All right, so just like that, here it is a very basic sprite, just a mesh filter with a quad and a mesh render. And over here, I have a prefab folder, so just drag it in there and there you go, now we have the player. So let's call this the prefab game object. All right, there's our prefab. So we can now remove it from the scene and yep, there it is, okay. So now that we have our prefab game object, we want to have a reference to this prefab that gets converted into an entity when we run the game. So let's look at the easiest way possible. So here, let's make a new script and call it the prefab entity component. Now inside, let's remove mono behavior and instead using unity.entities and this will be a I component data. And as always, this is a struct. And now inside, let's have a field for a entity called prefab entity. All right, so here it is, a very simple component which holds an entity. However, if we go up here and we add the automated attribute generate authoring component, and now we go back into the editor and let's make an empty game object and just drag our prefab entity component script. And yep, there you go, just like that, you can see that that field shows up as a game object field. So let's drag the prefab game object as that reference. And yep, there it is. So now add the convert to entity script. And now if we run the game just like this, and here it is, the game running, and we have nothing on the hierarchy, so no game objects. However, on the entity debugger, and over here, yep, you can see. You can see that our game object was correctly converted into an entity, and it contains our prefab entity component, which in itself contains a reference to our prefab game object, which again has also been converted into an entity. So here it is, our prefab as an entity, so the render mesh and everything exactly as intended. So here we have our prefab being correctly converted from a game object into an entity and then stored in a nice component field that we can then use. So now let's try to use it. Let's make a basic spawner system. So we make a new C -sharp script, call this the entity spawner system. Now in here, let's make this a component system. Okay, so here let's make a simple timer to spawn some entities. All right, so here just some simple logic, essentially spawning something every half a second. And now in here, in order to spawn our entities, let's do a entities dot for each. And now in here we can grab our component, which was the prefab entity component. And in here we can simply call entity manager dot instantiate and we're going to instantiate we use the prefab entity component to access our prefab entity. All right, so just like this we have our entities being spawned. Now let's just put them in random positions. All right, so here all we're doing is instantiating our prefab entity and then setting the component for the translation onto a random position. All right, so let's see. And yep, there's our prefab being instantiated. And if we pause and look at the hierarchy, yep, there you go, we have no game objects. So all of these are being instantiated as entities. And here on the entity debugger, we can see indeed our instantiated entities. 
So just like this, we have a game object prefab being converted into an entity, and then we're using that entity in order to spawn more entities. Awesome. So here we have the simplest and most straightforward way of converting prefabs into entities and later spawning them. We just make a component with an entity field, and we add the generate authoring component attribute. In doing so, we get a field that we can actually put a game object inside, and the conversion system automatically converts it into an entity. Okay, so now let's look at another approach. First, let's make a script where we can place our prefab reference. So let's make a new script. Let's call this one the prefab entities. And now in here, this will indeed be a mono behavior. Okay. So first we have a simple game object field. So a public game object for our prefab game object. And back in our scene, let's create a game object for our prefab entities. And we use our script. And there you go, we have a field for the normal game object. And we just drag our reference. Okay, so far so good. And now here, back in our code, we're going to also add using unity.entities. And now we're also going to implement the interface I convert game object to entity. This is the interface that is used by the conversion system in order to convert a game object into an entity. So we implement the interface, which uses this function. Now what this does is it converts this game object into an entity. And afterwards, we have the entity that has been converted, so we can use it to add more stuff. So now during the conversion process, we want to convert this game object into an entity. And now the way that we do that is using the game object conversion utility. And this one has a function called convert game object hierarchy. And here we take the root, which is going to be our prefab game object, okay. And then we need some settings. So for the settings, we grab them using this function, which grabs the settings from this world, which is going to be the world from this entity manager. And now we need a blob asset store. And just like this. So now this one returns the converted entity. All right, so here we have our entity that has been converted from our prefab game object. And now in order for us to use this entity in some sort of spawner, we need to store it somewhere. So one very simple way to store something is to use a static field. So here let's add a public static entity for our prefab entity. And then we set our static field. So prefab entities, our prefab entity, we set it to this prefab entity. All right, so after the conversion and storing it in our field, now we can go into our spawner system. And here, previously, we were using this method where we we're grabbing it from the component. But now instead of doing this, we do the same code for spawning our entity, except we grab our prefab from our static field. So there it is, just like that. And finally, in order to make sure that the conversion system calls our function, we're already implementing convert game object to entity. So all I need to do is back here in our game object that has our prefab entities, we also add the convert to entity script. All right, this should be working. Let's test. And yep, there you go. We have our entities being instantiated the same as previously. Again, no game objects, all of them as new entities. So over here, we saw a different approach of converting a game object into an entity. And we also saw a different approach for storing our converted entity, in this case, in a static field, which over here has the benefit that we do not have to do an entities for each in order to grab a specific component. We can access the static field from anywhere in our code. All right, so this is our second method using the I convert game object to entity and the game object conversion utility. Now let's look at another approach. So let's make a new C sharp script. Let's call this our prefab entities version two, okay. And now in here, let's remove these, but again, leave mono behavior using unity.entities. And now in here, we're going to implement the interface I declare reference prefabs. So this interface must implement this function, which as you can see, takes in a list of game objects. So let's add our prefab field, just like we did on the previous version. And now when we have this function being called, we simply go into the reference prefabs list and we add our new game object. So this is adding our prefab game object into the reference list for the conversion system. 
And now in here, we're also going to implement the convert game object to entity. And now here on the conversion function, we're going to use the conversion system and use the function get primary entity. This one, as you can see, takes an object. So we get the primary entity that is referenced by this prefab game object. And this will return an entity for our prefab entity. So here we're adding the prefab game object as a reference in the conversion system. And then when the conversion system calls this function, we're asking the conversion system to get the primary entity that matches the reference for this game object. And just like before, let's sort it in a basic static field. All right, so there it is. And now in the spawner system, we use that field instead. And now here back in our code, here we have the previous game object. So let's replace these prefab entities with the second version. And there you go. In the inspector, it works exactly the same. So we have our game object field and there it is. All right, so let's test. And yep, there it is. We have our entity prefabs being instantiated. Here it is in the entity debugger, all of them being instantiated. Awesome. Okay, so here we saw yet another approach for converting a game object prefab into an entity prefab. We add our game object as a reference prefab, then it gets automatically converted and we just get the entity after it has been converted. Now there is yet another approach that we could take, but for our simple scenario, it's a bit overkill. So I'll just briefly mention it. You can make a system. And in that system, you can make it of type game object conversion system. So this system takes the basic on update as if a component system. And it's called on update, but really it's only ever called once during the game object conversion stage. So this is how you make a custom system that works in the middle of the conversion system. And now in here, you can access authoring components while in the middle of conversion and use the same get primary entity that we did back here in order to set all the references. So again, this is a more advanced topic and a bit overkill for the simple scenario of instantiating an entity. But just in case you want to run some code during the conversion stage, then all you need to do is extend this system. All right, so here we looked at four possible ways that we can convert a game object prefab into an entity prefab. The first method is simply using a normal component with an entity field and then adding the generate authoring component. The second method, we implement convert game object to entity and we use the game object conversion utility in order to convert our game object into a prefab. On the third method, we implement declare reference prefabs and we add our game object into the reference list. And finally, the last method, we extend the game object conversion system and handle our conversion. Again, Unity Dots is still very much in development, so we're not entirely sure what the best practices will end up being, so here we have all options. Now, after converting our prefab into an entity, the next thing we need is to store that converted entity. And again, we also have multiple ways of doing that. Here we already looked at two ways. First, we can store the converted entity into a normal component, and secondly, we can store it in a static field. When using the component, we need to access the component to get the entity prefab, whereas with the static field, we can easily access it from anywhere. However, we have another way of accessing the component. Instead of doing an entities for each, if we only have one prefab component, as we should, then we can access it as a singleton. So instead of our for each, we just use get singleton of type prefab entity component. This returns our prefab entity component. And then we can use pretty much the same code as previously. So you grab the prefab inside of our component, our prefab entity, spawn it, and so on. So let's test. And yep, there you go, everything still works. So here using singletons, you have another method of grabbing the prefab entity. Now yet another approach we have of storing the prefab entity is using a blob asset. Blob assets are really interesting, so I won't be covering them in a dedicated video in the future. Okay, so all in all, here we covered four different ways of converting game object prefabs into entity prefabs. And we also covered four ways we can store and use our converted entity prefab. Again, as I said, the entire dot stack is still very much in preview, so not entirely sure which one will end up being the correct standard practice. So for the time being, use the approach that you prefer.
This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.